Is it working? Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thanks for inviting me. Uh, I have a lot of slides today, so I'll just need to find it first. Here. It's been attacked. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to talk to you <clears throat> about the underground economy, take you to the world of hackers, and tell you about their motivation, so why they do it. And all you need to remember about this talk is this mice over there. Uh, the mice is composed of four components, money, ideology, coercion, and ego. So. <laughs> These are the main reasons of hackers for doing illegal things. So I'll try to explain every piece in detail, starting with the money, of course. It's one of the uh, main reasons of hackers for doing these jobs. So uh, in this crime scene, the malware developers are the guys who just developed that malicious software and delivers it to some other guys to use it. Uh, they are like at low risk because they just call the malware and sell it to other hackers. But the selling a malware is like you get five thousand dollars on average, and for each customer, so you can just develop a single piece of software and sell it to as many clients as you want. And in New York City. A security consultant gets 100k per year, and it's like $4,000 monthly after tax. And coding a malware is it's an easy task. You can just do it less than a week. So you can sell it to at least 10 people per month on the average. It's based on experience at the moment with an FBI agent there. Uh, and you can just get like $50,000 per month by just developing a piece of malware. These guys, most of them, are not using that malware. Yeah. Uh, the black hats, or you call crackers, or the other illegal guys, they just take this malware, and suppose that now you're a black hat, and you get this malware, and you need to spread this malware to people, so you will infect their computers. Now you will pay 5,000 to the guy who developed this malware. Now you will need to spread it to, to other computers. So how you do it? Oh, just, you got an antivirus, but hackers have a solution for that too. So you go back to your shop, the malware developer, and you ask for a program called a cryptor, and it makes any malware undetectable to all antiviruses. And it's $50. And you can calculate the cost of an antivirus for a company, so you make the math. So now your malware is completely undetectable to antiviruses, and you are ready to distribute it. And the malware helps you because it has like spreading mechanism in itself. So it will just spread itself to other computers too. But you can just make it faster by just distribu distributing it with like sharing sites or some other methods. But if you want it like to, to infect more machines in a short time, there's another tool for that called exploit pack. So this is cost around like 2,000 or more and you can just get it from your shop, the malware developer again. And you install the script into a site. What it does is if anyone visits that site, uh, the site will try to infect the machine with some common vulnerabilities. So if you're using like old operating system or any program which has an old version itself, you'll just get infected. So you all know the links that people send to each other, like mails, or you get messages from instant messengers, 
with a link and you click that link and it will direct you to the exploit pack. But if you do not have like that many visitors, people also sell traffic. What it means that they just directing visitors to your site and they don't know anything about that. So you can get like 10,000 people per day around $300. So you can like create your own botnet. So this is the botnet that the last two talks has been, we've been talking about that. The bots are your machines, the compromised machines, and the attacker uh, issues a command to the command and control server on top, and that server just distributes that command to all of the bots. And if he wants your credit card numbers or anything, he just sends a command, and all the credit card numbers are collected back to the CNC server. Um, this is another architecture for botnet. So now you have the botnet and you want to monetize it. So there are a lot of different techniques, but I don't have time to explain all of them in detail. So the fraud is one of the most important things here that I'd like to talk about. Um, so the malware is specialized in capturing your credit card numbers. So after you get your, the credit card numbers, you can either sell to people or you can just use it yourself. If you try to sell to other hackers, so your credit card costs around $5, maybe less, if you can find some other like, shops. Uh, American Express costs $6, it's a bit expensive. Uh, and if you like get a lot of cards, like massive amount of cards, you get a nice discount from the shops. People are just confused. They don't think it's real. So I'm going to show you a site here. That's a shop. <laughs> and you can buy cards. See, you can, like, it's a nice shopping site. Some shopping sites are, like, worse than that. So you have a lot of credit card numbers there. <laughs> I have a moment with the FBI agent there. So <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's just, like, XXS there. I guess it's not that bad. So <laughs> you just pick the credit card numbers you want, and you just click by now, and you'll get all these numbers. So you, they have like search by state, search by country, search by bank, and this is just a small shop. There are like millions of sites like that. And all these sites are like, they have a secret invitation system, which are distributed to all hackers. You get a code, and you can only join them with that code or something. If you want to cash out, this is the difficult part. You just go to eBay, and you just like buy something. Uh, the risk is your address will be there, so people can find you. So in order to avoid it, you'll find the drop guys in the markets. These drop guys are mostly from European countries, not from US. Uh, what you do is you just give their address instead of yours, and they'll risk their lives and send the shipment back to you. So as a hacker, you're on the second hop, and what you pay is, if you buy an iPod or an iPad, you'll give one to the drop guy. But it's not important. It's not your card anyways. So what you do is, you just buy two of them, whatever you just order. And another cashing out mechanisms are online gaming sites, like online poker. People just join some, some on poker sites which are not protected. Some of them are heavily protected. Uh, what you do is you just put your money to the poker table and join this, to do that table with another player. That's, again, you. And you lose all your money in a, in a hand. So it's hard to track those uh, transactions. And like multiplayer games, the 
a recent game came out, which has like you can put your money into the online game and cash it out from somewhere else. And you can convert the money online. There are a lot of e-currencies now, Liberty Reserve, Web Money, Russian e-currency. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to tell you about it more, but you can just convert and convert and convert and lose your trace. Another motivation is the ideology. All you know about the anonymous group. Um, this is called a hacktivism. It's hacking for a cause. So some group of like kids, we can call them, uh, collaborate and attack governments for to, to prove something or just to say that the government is bad. So let's attack this side. Uh, what they do is the denial of service attack. It's a pretty, pretty simple attack. It, you just click a button and you, your computer sends packets to a site. The power of this uh, comes from you, you control thousands of computers. Remember the botnet that you built? So you just give a command to send packets. So all these computers, so your computers infected, send packets to a site and it becomes uh, unavailable to respond to other legal requests. So the media takes it and you will see the news like anonymous hacked some very important site. And what you see is like anonymous just did a very big thing. But the thing is they just reboot the server and everything like OK again. These are another incidents. Uh, and the motivation is ideology. Started like 2000. That, that was the one I found. That 16-year Canadian boy attacked with a denial of service attack using a botnet. And Russian activists. Uh, you can see a lot of Russian botnets in those ideological attacks. And the anonymous they created a tool for people. Uh, you just get the tool and join to the anonymous for their attacks. This is an important thing uh, for, for cyber warfare. The other motivation is coercion. I've, I put the name coercion, but it's like uh, using hackers for the cyber warfare. Uh, we mostly covered it for the, for the past two talks. So I'll just uh, try to skip it. Uh, this is a more complex design of a botnet. I'm showing this because the botnets can be used as a weapon for cyber warfare. So we can have a legitimate volunteer botnet to protect or for like proactive mechanism. Because like botnets, they have the property, they have all the properties of a moving target defense. So these giant networks, we can use it for both protection or they can be used as a deadly weapon in the hands of a hacker. And the other thing is ego. That's like kids do it for ego, attacking the other guys while playing games is the less important part. So, Thank you for listening to me.